Hello, hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Today, uh, I wanna say welcome to the channel. If this is your first time joining, welcome. My name is Marina K. And I do many things. I write books, I do coaching, I help people. And um, the first thing I wanna do is welcome you because if you're here um, considering parenting, this is one of the most you know, important things to really consider. It's not like marriage where you're really like um, loving this person till death. This is a responsibility, not just a responsibility to love someone, but to really um, <clears throat> consider many things. So the first thing I talk about often is that um, many people do not know how to love. So they transfer this lack of understanding how to love onto their children. So without having this, it's really important to really sit back and consider a few things. Um, one, the first thing to consider is your parental life. Were your parents really, what, what kind of experience did you have? The first thing I recommend is to write down every experience that you had, positive and negative, and moments where you said, well, I could do that better. That's the first thing. And um, why would you have me do this, Marin? Well, <laughs> this is important because, um, you know, when you really do an evaluation, in hindsight, things can be better or they can be worse or they are allowing you to really see things clearly, really. Um, were they helping me and, um, or was it just causing more confusion? What kinds of things did your parents argue about that they involved you in? What kinds of things did you, were they physically violent? How did they treat you in your education? These are things, this is the primary step first, so you can look at it yourself because you can go to anyone, no parenting magazine, no um, therapist is going to teach you how to love when this is, love is a reflection, right? Love is a responsibility, love is ever knowing. So when we have this, it makes things easier a bit um, to, to, to digest. So the next is just knowing how, how to be prepared. You're open to have uncomfortable conversations and experiences. So knowing that pregnancy is not just that, it's not just an epidural, it's not just three trimesters, it's not like a morning sickness phase, it's not um, being stretched or torn or a C-section or uh, in vitro or, um, it's not um, surrogate motherhood. It's, that's, a, that's a portion of it, and it's not diapers, and it's not college tuition. It's uh, fostering some another human being and equipping them to be the best human being and you being a good support system without traumatizing them too much and <laughs> giving them all of the tools that they need to be able to fly and soar. So when you're open, just open to having these conversations this means that you're aware that things are going to come up that this soul is going to have their own set of experiences that you may not be prepared to handle but you are open to handling it what do i mean by this i mean uh there's going to be moments where in their growth they're doing things. Are you comfortable talking about sexual issues or are you just like throwing that under the table? If you find pornography magazines or you find them, um, you know, in a strange moment, what looks like a homosexual moment or what looks like an eating disorder, are you just going to send them to a therapist and not talk about it? Or are you going to be open to having these uncomfortable conversations? Are you going to be comfortable saying, look, I don't really know how this works, but I know you're hurting. So I wanna be able to help you in the best way possible. Is this something that you are prepared to do? A lot of times in previous generations, you just don't talk about it. You beat the kids, you just you have one conversation, and that's it, you don't help them heal. Everything is a healing experience after all, right? So this is so important. Um, 
The next is that you're financially educated. Now, what do I mean by financial education? It's not just they have a bank account. It's understanding how you can support your family. So there was, like, let me give you an example. Financial education is not just stocks or gold and silver or uh, equity or ETFs or real estate. It's understanding how currency and finances work so you can prepare yourself and your children for an education of how they can, one, learn to fish for themselves and so you can secure a nest egg. Financial education can be actually one of the best things offered, not just running a business, not just how to start an LLC or versus an S Corp, versus a C Corp, versus um, a sole proprietorship. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a vast majority of different things. Now I'm gonna tie this financial education with just education in general. Now a lot of people during this time, this is the 22nd uh, and the last part of June. I was going to say July. <laughs> this is the last part of June. So it's really important during this part of June uh, to understand that there's this pandemic that has been happening and people are now pulling their children out of school and, you know, um, either homeschooling or going into charter schools or this is one of the most important things. Now, why is financial education linked with education? Because I was once a product of the system, most of us are, and it's not until our later ages where we stepped out of something and saw, wow, there's so much more to life and the world than what we were fed. You're ready to be a parent when you can think outside of what is given to you. You're ready to be a parent when your educational system is something that you personally can challenge. So there was a family I talk about um, often and uh, the first time I stepped out of the system personally was after a long string of very bad events, uh, which led to me leaving law school after my first year and experiencing a lot of pain and saying, you know what, homelessness, everything, I'm just gonna, I, I have $200 to my name and I'm going on a trip to Mexico and it's a one-way ticket. And during this time, I really I understood that everything was a lie. Failure is a lie. I understood this. And then one of the most beautiful things was I was more receptive to how other people live. Now, I've traveled before. I've traveled to multiple countries my entire life. And it hasn't been just one, oh, hey, let's go here. And you see that museum or do you see those people? They're so poor. Let's get them shoes. Those were my experiences. I mean, I, I am partially Nigerian. So uh, traveling through different parts of the world has been an eye opener. But this experience was one of the most profound. And on this journey, I met a family, Palacio Lopez. They are a married couple with four children, four sons. And when I met them, we were in Progreso in Yucatan. It's uh, just an hour north of Merida, <clears throat> which is the capital of Yucatan. So they were painting this house and they were telling me, look, we have maybe $20 to our name and we've been traveling all across Mexico and staying in really nice places, eating at Ruth Chris Steakhouse. You know, actually right now they're in uh, Egypt. They're in Cairo, Egypt, and they've been traveling without money. Now their comparison was, let's just see who does well, you know, the most. <clears throat> let's compare our children, our children who are 18, and our children who are, have traveled the world in many countries and have learned many languages, or your children. They're from Mexico City, so you know it's very metropolitan. Very, they were very well off, very well-to-do family that all of a sudden said, we're just gonna travel with no money. Now, I haven't actually understood their backstory. <laughs> I like to share my backstory because I don't feel that uh, People don't just want to know, hey, I want a million dollars. They want to hear, oh, really? You came from that before you got here? That's a sense of empowerment, the underdog, the rocky stories. 
So they've been traveling the world with little money and they are comparing their children when they turn 18, yours who are studying for the SAT and the ACTs for college entrance exams, or all children who have traveled the world and um, understand how life works and they have different skills. So this financial education is everything, education just in general, right? Um, and so the fourth, after you've written your list, after you understand that you have to be open to situations that you, um, maybe you haven't conquered yourself, but you are ready to deal with that before you enter that space with your child, is that yourself and that you're educated not just financially, but in all forms, that you're receptive to different forms of education. Now, why do I say this? Because there's some, you know, I don't want to say God forbid, but being prepared for how your child turns out. Some are specially gifted and uh, different spectrums. And expecting one type of child and not understanding an educational system for people who are gifted, for people who are maybe uh, gifted in other ways that aren't like the normal um, representation of a child. People who have what they call special needs. Things like this. This understanding this education first is so one of is going to save a lot of trouble versus when a child comes into the world and they feel your resentment. Now the next is the uh, self awareness. You have this one oh one, like this one oh one. You are so self aware. You understand how you operate. Not in um, so much that you have gotten to a place of self mastery. I do believe self-mastery is an ongoing process. So just having the basics, understanding how you work, understanding how you communicate, understanding, okay, mornings are not my best time, but I still love you. <laughs> understanding that there, um, when certain experiences happen, how you come off. And when you understand this, you will know how children will be affected. Um, when you feel disrespected, how do you act? Now imagine that with a whole group of parents and children. Just one-on-one, having the basic form of self-knowledge is one of the most important. And number five is that you've gone through deliverance. So you are not only self-aware, but you have understood and have actually conquered your demons. Any sort of demon that is living inside of you any, um, you know, addressing history, addressing traumas, addressing um, unrepressed issues, any sort of anger, um, actually going and seeing someone who is in the deliverance ministry to help you purge things that are no longer of you. Because remember, this situation is you're coming in and with so much love for something, someone, don't want to say thing, this child of yours, it's so important to, to have this understanding of yourself and to actually be able to want and to want to love on a clean slate. This is just like, I feel like that's something I just like cannot end or like, um, can't emphasize enough. So the next is that, number six, this one's probably fun, is that you budget time for your child. So it's important not to lose any form of self-care. You're ready for children when you're like, okay, I've budgeted time. Why do I say that this is so important? Because the large majority of people understand that for their parents, their love for them was just working and giving them money. But I pay your school fees, but you know, I bought you this big house, but I bought you a car, and they're not budgeting time to actually understand their children. This is so important. You wanna love your child and understand how they work on an individual basis. Now it's possible that this personality may clash with yours, but this is where the deliverance will come in handy because uh, you budget this time uh, to understand yourself, then you can give what you what you need to your child. So if your child you're, you're noticing is just whiny a lot and um, you, this child may actually just need more personal time with you, more one-on-one, -on -one. not just going to a restaurant and not saying anything, but genuine one-on-one -on -one play with me time. And then 
time to back off. You also want to budget time for yourself. This is so important. So without any form of rejuvenation, I know I've shared this often, and when I talk about Start Finishing by Charlie Gilkey and how he recommends in each project, we need to have any some form of rejuvenation, some form of uh, restor restoration. He calls it a restorative block of time. So this is important because it can be very draining, especially in the first year, two years, three years of the, the child's life. It's uh, requiring a lot of time. You're not sleeping, you're nursing, or you're waking up to give the child the bottle. So it's important that in these moments you just really budget and restore your own sense of self because if without this, it's going to be quite hard. And the last point, number seven, is that you're going to do all of the above. You're going to do the list for yourself. You're going to um, you're going to have the open conversations with your head held high. You're going to be educated in the most upright way possible. Now, there's going to be moments it's not going to be perfect, but you want to have your head held high. Now, let's later we'll talk about um, different types of parenting. You know. Um, like the immature parenting, a toxic form of parenting, a healed and healthy parenting. And this is important. So when you have done your own list and you have revised it and you have gone through, okay, look, I need to go, I need to read through everything that I've uh, gone through and I need to do so objectively, even in the points where it is painful, even in the points where it hurt the most. This is going to be one of the, the most important keys for you to move forward and understand one, some of your own triggers, some of the experiences that you've had that will either um, help you eliminate any form of generational curses and revolving in, in regards to love, in regards to um, giving to your child. And the most above all, before all of this, it's to remember that everything must be done with unconditional love. You're ready to give when everything is unconditional. You're not buying a house and saying, okay, I did it for you, now do this. I understand culturally it's very different. For Latinos, for Asians, and for some Africans, it's a very different experience. But still, in order to be a better generation, you teach your children this, but not demand it. Um, it's, it can be kind of complicated, right? <laughs> We're even splitting hairs here. But give only out of unconditional love, not out of obligation. Because I promise you, your children are going to feel your resentment every time you do them a good deed. You buy them a car. It was for them. Teaching them responsibility is different. But I, I promise you, when you do something out of exchange or anger or resentment, they're going to feel it. And the opposite end of that is depression. The opposite of that, of that is them taking on demons themselves. Now in deliverance ministry, this is how demons get started and they start, you know, um, they, they begin to grow inside of the person's soul. So when you're, you're ready for children, when you know that you want to give them the best life possible and equip them for all of the tools that they will need by exposure, by um, letting them fall, by loving them deeply and giving them the support that they need so they can be the best uh, parents to themselves and know that you were always right there. Okay, guys, this was really nice. I hope to hear from you. Uh, drop me a heart in the comments if you found this useful. And if you feel like sharing, number one, some of the experiences that you had, feel free to do so in the comments below. Thank you so much. And if you felt that this was supportive of you, please hit the thumbs up button and you don't want to miss another video. So hit that notification bell so you know when I'm on live or when I'm able to, uh, when I'm, when I'm back again, I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.